Morning everyone, welcome to our morning worship and prayer. It's another beautiful day we get to begin and start with God. Let's worship Him now through music. This is the day of new beginnings. The old is passing. Change is coming by your spirit. It's a new season of revealing your word is true. is coming by your spirit it's a new season of revealing your word is true and you will never ever fail your presence will lead us always providing in the desert and filling our souls with living water turning dead ends into doorways. This is the day of new beginnings. The old is passing. Change is coming by your spirit. It's a new season of revealing. is coming by your spirit it's a new season of revealing your word is true and you will never ever fail your presence will lead us always providing in the desert you're filling our souls with living water You're turning dead ends into doorways. You're doing a new thing, God. You're doing a new thing now. It springs forth. Help us perceive it. failed me 
never failed me yet I've tasted and seen it He's never failed me yet My heart and my soul confess Jesus is my confidence And He's never failed me He's never failed me yet He's never failed me yet Oh, my heart and my soul confess God is my confidence He's never failed me Lord, that is our prayer and declaration that you are our confidence. Do you believe that, church? Could you type that declaration in the comment section? God is my confidence. Lord, you are our confidence as we face today. You are our confidence as we worship you, as we dig into your word. You are our confidence in facing life. We praise you for this new beginning that we get to start today with you. We love you, Lord, and commit this time of devotion to you. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Morning, everyone. Welcome to our morning worship and prayer. We're starting off with a new series in our morning devotions on kingdom parables from Jesus. Now, parables are stories that use common situations from everyday life to convey spiritual truths. Let me read Matthew chapter 13, verse 24. Matthew 13, verse 24. Jesus told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like... Let me pause there for a bit. Jesus spoke a lot about the kingdom of heaven. It was central to his message and to his ministry. Some view the kingdom of heaven as a sphere or a realm where God's kingdom and rule is. Meanwhile, others view the kingdom of heaven as God's activity himself, where his power is made manifest, where signs and wonders exist. But nonetheless, the kingdom of God or the kingdom of heaven was central to Jesus' ministry and central to his message. In fact, he declared it and he demonstrated it. Jesus declared it as he went about his ministry. He said, repent for the kingdom of God or the kingdom of heaven is near. When Jesus taught his, his disciples to pray, he taught his disciples to pray like this. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. He declared the kingdom of heaven, but at the same time, he also demonstrated the kingdom of heaven through signs, wonders, power, and miracle. You see, during the time of the New Testament, the Israelites, the Jews, were under Roman rule. And for us today, we've also had an experience of different governments, different leaders, isn't it? But you see, when Jesus declared the kingdom of God, He was declaring God's rule. He was declaring a kingdom unlike any other. He was declaring God's kingdom that was unlike anything His people have seen before. Jesus declared and demonstrated a kingdom that is unlike any other. A kingdom marked with salvation, healing, restoration, restored relationships, power. Wouldn't you want to be part of a kingdom like that? That was the kind of kingdom that Jesus declared and demonstrated. Now, what does this kingdom look like? You see, Jesus introduces to us the kingdom of God when He came here on earth as the Messiah, the kingdom of God someday will be fully established when Jesus returns in all His glory. But the good news is, we can experience and live the kingdom here and now. So what does the kingdom of God look like? These are the parables that Jesus taught the crowd and taught His disciples. Let me read again, Matthew 13 verses 24 to 30. It says there, Jesus told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a man who sowed good seed in his field. 
But while everyone was sleeping, his enemy came and sowed weeds among the wheat and went away. When the weeds sprouted and formed heads, then the weeds also appeared. The owner's servants came to him and said, Sir, didn't you sow good seed in your field? Where then did the weeds come from? An enemy did this, he replied. The servants asked him, Do you want us to go and pull them up? No, he answered, because while you are pulling the weeds, you may root up the wheat with them. Let them both grow together. Let both grow together until the harvest. At that time, I will tell the harvesters, first collect the weeds and tie them in bundles to be burned, then gather the wheat and bring it into my barn. What does this parable mean? Again, parables are stories that use common everyday life situations to convey a spiritual truth. Now, not all parables Jesus explained, but here in Scripture, we get a glimpse that Jesus interpreted this and Jesus explained this to His disciples. Jesus taught in parables to the crowd, but to His closest disciples, to those who followed Him. He explained and unlocked the mysteries and the secrets of the kingdom of God to those who followed Him closely and to those who were considered as His disciples, He unlocked and revealed the mysteries and secrets of the kingdom of God. Do you consider yourself as a disciple? Do you consider yourself as a follower of Jesus? Scripture reveals to us, to those who follow Him, God unlocks the secrets and mysteries of the kingdom. But for those of us today, we get to see that interpreted through Jesus and through the Word. Now, He interprets it in the following verses. Verse 36 to 39 says there, Then he left the crowd and went into the house. His disciples came to him and said, Explain to us the parable of the weeds in the field. He answered, The one who sowed the good seed is the Son of Man, a term that Jesus uses for himself. The field is the world, and the good seed stands for the sons of the kingdom. The weeds are the sons of the evil one, and the enemy who sows them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the age, and the harvesters are the angels. We see here facets of that parable interpreted by Jesus himself. Now, I want to say this note. We want to be careful in reading parables and putting meanings on different symbolisms or metaphors that Jesus says in other parables. But here, Scripture plainly interprets it for us, none other by Jesus himself. So there we see that interpretation. The sower of good seed is the son of man or God. The sower of the weeds is the enemy or the devil. The good seed or wheat is you and me, the sons of the kingdom of God. The weeds are the sons of the evil one. The field is the world. So God says he sows good seed, the sons and daughters of God, into the field into the world. Harvest is the end of the age and the harvesters are the angels. What can we learn from here? We see two sowers and two seeds. God sows good seed into the world while the enemy, the devil, sows evil into the world. Everything that is good is sown by God, but God has an enemy. And what the enemy does is to sow evil to distort what God had meant for good and turn it for evil. Now, maybe some of you have asked this question. Have you asked or encountered this question? If God is good, why is there so much evil in the world? If God is good, why is there injustice? Why are the wicked not punished? Perhaps you've encountered or asked this question and it echoes one of the questions brought up in this parable. Verse 27 says, The owner's servants came to him and said, Sir, didn't you sow good seed in your field? Where then did the weeds come from? An enemy did this, he replied. Now what happens to the weeds and the wheat? Scripture says God allows both to grow. God allows both to grow. Matthew 13, 30 says, Let both grow together until the harvest. There is a time where both growths will be accounted for. You see the context here when farmers were planting weed, were planting wheat and the weed, it's hard to distinguish both when they're growing. And 
God allows both to grow because in uprooting the weeds, the wheat, the good seed might be uprooted also. But then, come harvest time, the distinction between the wheat and the weeds will be clearly seen. Why? Because those with wheat filled with grain will bow down. Filled with grain, they bow down at the harvest time. But those that are weeds, filled with nothing, will stand erect during harvest. So wheat would bow down, the weed will stand erect, stand tall, and there the harvesters can finally sort them out, separate them, segregate them. Now we see there two sowers, God sowing good seed, the enemy sowing evil into the world. But we also see there in that parable, two destinies. Those who are sons of God will enjoy God's eternal kingdom, while those who are sons of the evil one will face eternal torment. Verse 30 says there, Let both grow together until the harvest. At that time, I will tell the harvesters, first collect the weeds and tie them in bundles to be burned, then gather the wheat and bring them into my barn. The wheat will be stored in God's barn. The weeds will be burned. Verse 40. As the weeds are pulled up and burned in the fire, so it will be at the end of the age. The Son of Man will send out His angels and they will weed out of His kingdom everything that causes sin and all who do evil. They will throw them into the fiery furnace where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Then the righteous will shine like the sun in the kingdom of their father. He who has ears, let him hear. He who has ears, let him hear. Two destinies that we see there, those who are sons of God will enjoy his eternal kingdom. And those who are sons of the evil one, those who do wicked things, those who cause others to stumble, will face eternal torment, where there will be a fiery furnace fiery furnace and gnashing of teeth and weeping. The wicked will not go unpunished forever. Injustice will not go around forever. God will exact judgment. Three applications for all of us as we hear this parable. Jesus ends the parable by saying, He who has ears, let him hear. What then does it mean for us today as we hear this parable? First, we are not to judge. We are not to judge. Instead, we are to declare and demonstrate the kingdom of God. We are to declare and demonstrate the good news of the kingdom of God here and now. We are not to judge. So, hindi po tayo yung, ah, mabuti yan. Ah, masamang damo yan. We are not to judge. We leave the judgment to God. But as for us, we declare and demonstrate the good news of the gospel Honor God, make disciples, preach the gospel, invite people to the kingdom. But it's not for us to judge. First application for all of us, we are not to judge. Instead, we are to continue demonstrating and declaring the goodness of the gospel. Second application for us, take heart and trust that God is a rewarder and a just judge. If you see injustice and evil around, take heart. God will reward those who are righteous and God will surely exact justice and judgment for the wicked. Last application, repent, turn from sin and turn to God. Repent, turn from sin and turn to God. Jesus, when he was starting out his ministry, because of the reality of the kingdom of God, he said this, Matthew 4, 17, from the time on, from that time on Jesus began to preach repent for the kingdom of heaven is near because of the reality of the kingdom of heaven Jesus calls people to repent turn from sin and turn to God are there areas in our lives that are not yet fully submitted to his lordship to his rulership God calls us to repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand Peter, one of his disciples who heard this parable firsthand, echoes this saying, 2 Peter 2, 9-10, The Lord is not slow in keeping His promise, as some understand slowness. He is patient with you, 
not wanting anyone to perish but everyone to come to repentance while there is still time repent but the day of the lord will come like a thief jesus calls us to repent because of the reality of the kingdom of god we are to repent turn from sin and turn to god a while ago we said jesus declared and demonstrated to us a kingdom that is unlike any other but you see jesus himself is a king unlike any other before he was crucified when he predicted his death he also used that illustration of a wheat to talk about his sacrifice on the cross john 12 24 jesus says this i tell you the truth unless a kernel of wheat falls to the ground and dies it remains only a single seed but if it dies it produces many seeds jesus was talking about his life as the seed that dies and yields eternal life for you and for me the one who taught us about the parable of the wheat and weeds is one who died for both the wheat and the weeds the one who sowed his life so he can reap eternal life for you and for me but the question is will we repent will we invite people to the kingdom of god so they can have kingdom lives here and now matthew 13 43 it ends he who has ears let him hear i pray that we would hear this not just plainly with our ears but we would hear and respond to the invitation it's not for us to judge we are to declare and demonstrate the kingdom of god we trust and take heart that god is a just judge and that he's a rewarder and also we repent we turn our back away from our sin and turn to god let him who has ears hear lord we thank you that you have given us a glimpse of what the kingdom is like you declared it and you demonstrated it lord what a privilege and joy to be a part of your kingdom and lord we say we receive that word lord we say we repent for the times that we have judged others lord thank you for reminding us that it's not for us to judge but we are to declare and demonstrate your kingdom so that more people can be a part of it lord we repent whenever we feel discouraged hopeless because of evil and injustice around us lord today we say you are our confidence we put our trust in you knowing that you are a rewarder and that you are a just judge wickedness will not go unpunished justice will happen vengeance is yours you will exact justice and judgment lord our posture is to trust you and to take heart and lord we say we repent if there are areas in your life that god is asking would you turn your back away from that and turn to me hear god's call or perhaps if you haven't if you just know that you're not yet part of the kingdom of god while it's not yet harvest time god's giving you time he's patient with you not wanting you to perish but for you to have eternal life would you respond to his invitation to be a part of his kingdom if that is you just pray this prayer with me lord jesus i repent i turn my back away from my sin and turn to you i accept your invitation to be a part of your kingdom that is unlike any other help me live in your kingdom today and all the days of my life in jesus name amen amen why do we continue to sing that song once more and declare that god is our confidence and he will never fail He's never failed me yet He's never failed me yet My heart and my soul confess God is my confidence He's never failed me yet Oh, He's never
He's never failed as yet. No, oh, he's never failed as yet. Our hearts, our souls confess. God is our confidence. He's never failed as yet. This is the day of new beginnings. The old is passing. Change is coming by your spirit. It's a new season of revealing your Amen, amen. May you continue to declare that God is your confidence as you declare and demonstrate the gospel today and every day of your life. God bless you. Have an amazing day ahead.